Okay, guys. <clears throat> it's Pride Month. Happy Pride Month to everyone. We should be proud to be who we are every day. And I'm glad we have a month in June to focus on that and make sure everyone everywhere knows how important it is to love oneself and who you love no matter what. For June Pride Month, I sat down uh, one or two days last week and I was like, let me enjoy some LGBTQ movies. I enjoy them all the time, but I was especially mindful to enjoy them this month in June and we're about to roll out of June here soon. So I'm going to try and create some more content around that. But anyway, I found a beautiful lesbian love story from Africa entitled The Valley of a Thousand Hills. The Valley of a Thousand Hills. Oh my goodness, it's a star-crossed lover's story. And you have the Jiwi and C so Nocifo. They are just absolutely beautiful, um, well, I would say, well sketched characters, beautiful actors, well portrayed, who portray their roles exquisitely on film. Um, they are young women from a village in Africa. They've been in love for a long time. They've been dating a long time. But issues arise when the time, of course, comes for them to get married. Now, it's obvious the Jiwi, the, the Jiwi is not going to be the one to get married, at least not right off the cuff. Um, she's tall, sturdy, and sturdy in her mindset as far as I'm not interested in guys. And I don't have a problem telling anyone that. I am not interested, as she told her brother, and I believe her father. Um, but no one was mm, trying to strong arm her into getting married. The issue was with Nocifo. Nocifo was the shorter, more feminine one. Girly girl for sure. And guess what? The main character, the Jiwi's brother, Vika, V-I-K-A, Vika, is the one who falls in love with Nosifu, Nosifo. Now, I don't, I wouldn't say he fell in love with her. I'd say she came of age uh, in a very sensual, right way, like fruit. She was voluptuous. That's what I'll say. She was voluptuous, had the nice breasts, the waist, the, the, the hips, the thighs, beautiful face. Not that his sister did not have those characteristics. She did, but she was definitely, definitely more butch, I would say, more masculine of center. So Vika is a braggadocious, handsome cat in the village, The one of the leading men's of the leading family's um, sons. So he just went away, got a great job in Pretoria in Britain, and I think in Britain, and was just known in the village as the man, if not in his own head, hopefully in others, because he was like, look, what guy in the village can offer Nosifu more than, Nosifu, Nosifu more than what I can offer? You know, I'm just the man. And he was just, he was simply braggadocious. What happens? He decides with his mother that he is going to marry the Jiwi's woman, Nosifo. When that happened, it rose everything into play for a blow up, for a climax, because... Nocifo 
is a daddy's girl. Her mom is dead, so she's been dealing with dad for so long. She wants to do what he says, but yet she wants to be an independent woman. I mean, she's a teacher, and I love that about her. But when the Jiwi's brother proposes, and her father, of course, arranges everything with uh, the Jiwi's parents, Nosifo says yes to the marriage. Her girlfriend is like, are you crazy? What are you talking about? And it doesn't matter. She still goes on. But wait, wait, wait. I think they decide to run away. No, Sifo decides to ha come up with this plan. And they want to run away and live their lives free in the city because No, Sifo heard that people could do that in the city. On the day they are supposed to run away, guys, she doesn't leave the house. She goes right on with her life as though her love, the love of her life is not waiting for her at the bus stop. You need conflict. You need conflict in any movie, so there's the conflict. And the they get married. The couple gets married on the wedding night the brother goes out and gets drunk with the men, uh, comes back home, falls asleep. She's in her wedding dress, ready to, I guess, let him consummate the marriage, which he can't do because he's drunk. Nosifo goes out to find the Jiwi and proposes that they spend the night together. They do. Um, the door is unlocked, I gather. The husband comes in and finds them together. And oh my goodness, blow up, blow up. The mother comes in fussing. The mother hates the daughter anyway. The father, the son is angry. You know, you were with my wife, my woman. He takes her out of that room. No, he doesn't. The, uh, he leaves the house running after his sister to try and communicate, to get some understanding about what is going on here. And then uh, she's left, Nosifo is left in the room with her mother-in-law, her new mother-in-law. And the mother-in-law tells her, go make it right. Go make it right with your husband. She goes to try and talk to him. And what he does is he rapes her just pushes her back on the bed, pulls up her skirt, takes himself out of his pants and rapes her, goes on about his business. You've got to see that if you have not seen it. I love the fact that a traditional healer is in the storyline. And so, because the mother is griping to the father and the son, son agrees to send the new daughter-in-law to a healer, a traditional African healer, known as the Sangoma, Sangoma. And the, the Sangoma's name is Gobella. And Gobella comes up with something that I thought was wonderful in the movie. She tells the mother who comes in angry that she has not healed her daughter. But uh, Gobella tells the mother, get out of here. I don't want you to ever come back into this sacred place. I love that the healing was done in a sacred place where you had to kneel and crawl into this space praying. She said, there is nothing wrong with your daughter. You are the actual problem. There's nothing wrong with, with her loving another woman. And um, your daughter can stay here because you've already paid and you get out. I loved it. It was an excellent movie. But the theme was uh, love conquers all, even unto death. I don't want to tell everything, but I will let you go and watch The Valley of a Thousand Hills. I also looked at a movie that I had started a while ago, like last year sometime, sometimes, but I never finished it. And it was um, Ride or Die. 
It was Asian flavored. It was Asian oriented. Beautiful Asian actresses. Uh, and in this one, Ray, a young woman from a wealthy family, meets and falls in love with a young woman from an abusive poor family. She loves her for years. I mean, all the way through high school, ten, a decade or so, a decade, I think, after high school. And this poor woman, this poor girl, uh, is like, I'm not a lesbian. I like what you can do for me, buy me things, help me out when I'm in trouble, but I'm not. I'm not trying to settle down with you. That's not the life that I want. And so she goes on and marries a guy who can buy her. And she said she went with the high, the guy who could offer the highest amount of money. Why would you want to do that, my love? Why? Because he ends up abusing her more so than her family situation. Um, and when the young woman who loves her comes back into her life and realizes that her this her lover's husband is abusing her. Mind you, they had not consummated. She simply loved her, period. Just loved her. Um, when she came back into, when when Ray came back into the poor girl's life, mm, this hair is everywhere, um, and learned that her husband was abusive, she did something that, well, I wouldn't agree with, but she did something that um, was crucial in the picture, which was a theme also in the film, was that what would you do uh, for the person that you loved? Would you kill for the person that you loved? And Ray does that. When she finds out that her lover's husband is abusing her, she goes on and murders the woman's husband. And the rest of the picture is her running from the police with the woman and as they are on the run the lover the woman that she, that Ray loves actually falls in love with Ray because Ray is just literally true to herself in no matter what even realizing that her life is shattered she continues to go on and love this other person so at the end of this picture, uh, sorry, I'll tell you the end, but you should see it anyway. Uh, the, the one who's loved tells Ray, when the police take Ray away, I will wait for you. I will wait for you. Don't worry. They, they, both of them are like isolates. They don't have anything but one another. Um, the rich girl, Ray, has a brother and a sister and a father, I believe. Is the father still living? He's in the hospital. But um, it seems like she has more than the other one because at least the brother, the brother's wife helped them in the end. And she even asked the brother, what would you do? Would you kill for the people that you love? And then she explained to him that she would if his life were in danger or their children. So that's ride or die. But the, the third one I'm going to quickly talk about here because it's getting hot out here and my time on my cell phone is going up, up, up. Well, this one is Ride or Die and it was African. Ooh, Ride or, no, not Ride or Die. The third one is Side Dish. This one is from Africa, filmed in Africa with African actresses. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And in this one, it's a series, it wasn't a movie. In this one, you have a girl's weekend and um, four friends, very different, very lovely in their differences. Some married, some not, some with children, some not. Uh, they go away for a boozy girl's weekend on This Is All on Netflix. When they go away for the weekend, the fair-skinned one that one of the darker guys coupled with one of the darker women says to this one, you're like a leftover white girl. I mean, you're no, you know, <laughs> it was, I guess the film's way of saying for the dark Africans, um, some of them look down on the whiter Africans mixed with the white blood. 
But anyway, uh, he when they drive away, he's he's ridiculing her for being half white. The half turns out the half white girl is going to be the one who uh, puts everything into motion. I mean, she's the one that the the series starts with as far as leaving an old, older husband. And she's she looks like she's in her 30s or 40s. And the husband looks like he's about 70, if not older. They have a, a child. And um, it's obvious she's leaving him to hook up with, well, she does leave him to hook up with her boyfriend, her sidekick, her side piece, the side dish, <laughs> thus the name of the series. And um, what happens is the side dish meets up with the four women, unbeknownst to three of them. But of course, the fair complected one knows he's coming. And he's a handsome brown skinned African that I have seen before. But the other women are like, ooh, did you see her man? Is she going to keep him here? He ends up dying. Yes, he ends up <laughs> being accidentally killed. And, and who accidentally kills him? Now you know, it's the fair complected actress. Um, uh, well, woman, she is uh, pushing another one, and then he comes up to stop them. I think she's pushing her because uh, the other one is questioning her about why he should still be there. That it was a girls' weekend, and why was he there? And she, she, her, the light skinned one, was saying, "Well, you know, you need to get you somebody. Um, you know, not just settle for who you have, especially if he's the, if he's an old man." But when the younger one comes up to stop the women from tussling, the light-skinned one pushes her lover and he falls back, cracked his skull, blood rolled everywhere. Now you've got to deal with for the rest of the series how the murder or the covered up death affects the women. One woman goes crazy and actually uh, kills herself, commits suicide. Um, the other just breaks down emotionally and it affects all of them except the fair-skinned one. She goes on like, okay, I'm an actress. I'm uh, doing, I want to open my salon. <laughs> totally unaffected. Um, I don't know how that in series ended. I just tired of watching it. Uh, it was good, though. It was very good. But the emotional exactitude of what happened or the emotional stress of what happened to uh, the women who actually felt something, uh, who who didn't want to cover up uh, the, the death, but were forced to by the others. All of them were forced to cover up by the fair complected one. And I think one of the others, it took its toll because everybody can't cover up a murder and walk away and pick up the pieces of their lives. Everybody can't do that. But yet the main character could. So you should see it and I'll probably go back and finish watching it. But anyway, right now I'm going to end this vlog right here on Sunday and wish everyone, oh, what is this crawling on me? <laughs> and wish everyone a beautiful next week. Mwah, mwah. It feels like it's starting to rain. I might have to read inside under the deck because it feels great out here. I'm so, so happy <laughs> staying in this present moment. Stay out of the past. The past has finished gone. Learn from it. Stay out of the future, but mm, can you really prepare for it? Um, I guess you could prepare as much as possible, but learn from it. But oh, learn from preparing, from preparation. But with all due respect, enjoy the present moment. Enjoy the gift of unwrapping the present as often as you can. And love yourself and others as much as you can. Love you guys. Bye.
Hello, it's Claudia, and I'm going to stop eating at 8. Yes, I've decided, 8 o'clock. That way, my last meal will have ample time to digest, and my body will have ample time to just stop digesting for a whole 24 hours, and I will just go to sleep and at 12 noon the next day, I'll start eating again with my first meal. Yes, this is all plant-based because inside of here is vegan cheese and black rice. That's what I said, black rice. Yum, yum. Fresh honey mangoes on top. And this, believe it or not, is baked yams, nutmeg, allspice, and cinnamon. And underneath here is purple cabbage. Oh my goodness. Almond milk, yes. This is going to be scrumptious. <laughs> I have frozen purple cabbage prepped and this is how it looks today. The vegan chick burger patty with the fresh honey mangoes on top, an organic spinach with fresh mangoes and ginger salad dressing. Oh my God, it's so good. And here of course is the purple cabbage with the sweet potatoes and nuts. Oh my goodness, it's paradise. Yum.